Hello everyone. This year is full of elections across the continent and you may have noticed that social media was filled with heated discussions. But are we really having a genuine debate? Many times we only see repetitions of slogans that ignore reality and promote economic models that are based on true hidden deceptions. Today we are going to unmask an authentic Chinese tale that spread throughout the region, hiding the true cause of the transformation of Latin America in recent years. Are you ready to find out what was behind China's growth and its impact on our region? Stay with us to find out. Let's see the rise of China. Since 2000, China has grown at an incredible speed, with GDP growth rates exceeding 10% annually in several periods. This growth was driven by rapid industrialization and urbanization, which required enormous quantities of raw materials. China became the world's largest producer and exporter and the main consumer of natural resources, generating unprecedented demand for commodities exported from Latin America. Let's pay attention to Brazil. Brazil was one of the main beneficiaries of China's growth. Demand for soybeans and iron ore soared. In 2003, when Lula da Silva became president, soybean prices were around $200 per ton, and in 2012, under Dilma Rousseff, they reached approximately $650 per ton. Iron ore went from $30 per ton in 2003 to $180 per ton in 2011. This enormous premium generated unexpected wealth for Brazil. Soybean exports increased from 22 million tons in 2003 to 44 million tons in 2012, while iron ore exports increased from 200 million tons in 2003 to 352 million tons in 2012. Let's go to the situation in Argentina. Argentina also experienced notable growth in its agricultural exports. Under the governments of Nestor Kirchner and Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, the price of soybeans rose from $200 per ton in 2003 to more than $600 per ton in 2012. This increase allowed the country to pay off debts and emerge from the 2001 crisis. Argentina's soybean exports increased from 26 million tons in 2003 to 42 million tons in 2012. Let's continue now with Chile. Chile, the world's largest copper producer, prioritized its production as copper prices soared. In 2000, under the presidency of Ricardo Lagos, the price of copper was around $0.80 per pound, and by 2011, during the presidency of Sebastian Piñera, it reached almost $4.50 per pound. Chinese demand was key, consuming close to 40% of global copper production. Chile knew how to invest in the development of new exportable activities to diversify its economy. Copper exports went from 4.4 million tons in 2000 to 5.5 million tons in 2011. Let's move on to the situation in Peru. Peru, another major producer of copper and gold, also benefited from Chinese growth. During Alejandro Toledo's term, the price of copper began to rise, peaking in 2011. Gold also saw its price increase from $400 per ounce in 2003 to more than $1,800 per ounce in 2011 under Alanta Humala. Peru's copper exports increased from 0.8 million tons in 2003 to 1.3 million tons in 2011, while gold exports increased from 180 tons in 2003 to 210 tons in 2011. To close the round, let's see what happened in Venezuela. Venezuela, with vast oil reserves, experienced a significant boom under the government of Hugo Chavez. The price of oil went from $20 per barrel in 2000 to more than $140 per barrel in 2008. This increase allowed Venezuela to expand social programs, but Chavez's management wasted resources and destroyed production factors, a situation later aggravated by Nicolas Maduro, who left the country in a deep crisis. Venezuela's oil exports went from 2.5 million barrels per day in 2000 to 2.7 million barrels per day in 2008, although this figure began to decline significantly in the following years due to poor management of the state company PDVSA and the lack of investment in the industry. But like any extraordinary phenomenon, one day it ends and things return to normal. The commodities boom faded around 2014 when the Chinese economy began to slow. Prices of soybeans, copper, iron ore and oil fell significantly, negatively affecting Latin American economies. The economic models of several countries were exposed to their inviability if they did not have additional income, so your ruler. They began to finance their lack of money by requesting external loans, creating bonds and generating a large monetary issue without backing, which resulted in high inflation and increased poverty. In short, China's economic growth between 2000 and 2014 generated an exceptional increase in commodity prices, benefiting several Latin American governments. 
However, instead of developing and diversifying their economies, many countries spent extraordinary income on social emergencies and state expansion, creating a false prosperity that ended when prices fell. The immense amount of extraordinary and exceptional resources that entered each country were initially allocated to social emergencies and later to create electoral clientelism schemes to achieve re-elections, irresponsibly wasting the opportunity to invest in production factors that could generate genuine growth in other sectors. That can create jobs. The initial beneficiaries of the government's social plans ended up condemned to poverty due to the selfishness and corruption of a political class that privileged their ambitions for power over the future of their countries, whether they are from the right or the left is irrelevant. Spending more than one earns inevitably leads to the generation of debt or the issuance of money without support, and Latin America fell into that trap. The crucial lesson is the need to diversify economies to sustain long-term growth, and the issue is not discussed in election campaigns. The opportunity to elect a new government has to be a decision that allows us to put an end to bad management and project a better future for the entire society. Latin America is experiencing moments of profound change and has a great future ahead if it learns from its own mistakes. Thank you for joining us here in this review of the economic truth that many hide. Some leaders have convinced their followers that the period of economic prosperity is due to the expertise in economic management and successful government management that they themselves had while presiding over the country. When, in reality, with honorable exceptions, they are the same ones who squandered resources, lost great opportunities, impoverished themselves with inflation, enriched themselves with corruption, and left an oversized and unviable state for the next government to adjust. How was the management in your country? We read you in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel. It costs nothing and helps us grow. Until next time.